who are visiting for the first time, welcome to the State Museum of Pennsylvania. My name is Amy Jukas and I work in the <coughs> Education and Outreach section. And I have a special guest today, Senior Curator in Botany and Zoology, Dr. Walter Mashaka. And um, Dr. Mashaka is going to talk to you all about Pennsylvania snakes. And please feel free to take a flyer. We have a lot of programs happening this summer here in Nature Lab on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Also, Dr. Mishaka has written a really good couple of neat uh, guidebooks of Pennsylvania wildlife, a pocket guide to Pennsylvania snakes and frogs, and they're available in the museum store. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Mishaka. Well, <clears throat> well, thank you, Amy, and uh, also thank you for the hard work in organizing these sorts of programs. They've been very successful here at the State Museum. And I want to thank you all for being here, because after all, this is your museum, both for cultural and history and natural history of your state. From the past and to the present and to the future, this is a place for you to learn about the things that affect you growing up in Pennsylvania. Okay. So as Amy had mentioned, um, I'm the curator for zoology and botany. So the holdings of plants and animals and, and such for the, for the Commonwealth is in the section that I oversee. It also happens that I am a herpetologist by training. I work with amphibians and reptiles, which I enjoy very much. So I thought today, I have a half an hour with everybody, and I thought I would pose one simple question and then we'll kind of go through things. What is a black snake? All right. What is a black snake? Okay. Now, first of all, everybody, we're, we've got part of our natural heritage here. You're very curious young people, I can tell. Very well behaved, thinking people. As long as I don't like run screaming out of here, you don't need to either, okay? All right. So the first black snake we have is actually something, because the people call them black snakes in Pennsylvania. Okay? And the first kind of black snake, nobody realizes that there's more than one kind, is actually known as a black rat snake. Okay? All right? I can't let anybody touch it, not necessarily because the snake will bite, but it's just a lot easier this way. And I'll walk around. Now, when I walk around to show you things about, about these animals, if you're kind of nervous about me getting too close, then just raise your hand when I'm walking by and I'll make sure that I don't, okay? Well, hold on, I'll explain. So rat snakes are very, very common in the eastern part of the United States, from southern Canada down to the Florida Keys, over to central Texas. They're very good at climbing, they're very muscular. The ones that are up north are black just like this. If you go farther south, let's say to Georgia and to parts of Florida, they're yellow. If you get to the panhandle of Florida and Alabama, they're gray. When you get to the Everglades, they're like pumpkin orange. Then when you get to the Florida Keys, they're orange with blotches and, and stripes. That's very uncommon for a snake to have that. So you've got to ask yourself, how come is that? Why would a snake look like this? Well, there's a few reasons for all of them. Gray rat snakes, they, they try to look like oak trees that they spend their time in. But here's the issue with the black rat. You and I have what make what's called metabolic heat. We make our own warmth, right? We're all the time warm. We might feel cold outside, but our body keeps us at uh, 98.6 degrees. For a snake to be as warm as it needs to, it needs a hot rock to sit on, or it needs sun hitting it, or it needs warm air. By being black, that absorbs heat. So if you took a soda pop can, two soda pop cans, and you painted one black and painted one white, and you filled them both up with water, and you set them outside, and you put th uh, thermometers in them, the black one's going to start roasting pretty, pretty fast. So nature has selected over thousands upon thousands of years that the snakes that make it up north look like this. But that's where black snakes end 
in terms of their being similar to the other black snake. But let's first talk a little bit more about this black snake. It should be called a black rat snake. This one here is an adult. They'll get a little bit bigger and they can even get heavier. And really what they love to eat are rodents. And what they do is they're very muscular and they constrict to do it. They grab the rat, we twist around it, they squeeze it to death, and then they eat it. And then we can all feel better at the end of the day that we don't have a rat near our barn. But to do that, they have to have lots of muscles, which they do, and they have to have these scales shaped the way they are here so that they can help climb. They can climb up foam poles if they have to. Isn't that neat? All right. See how he's flicking his tongue? That's him sniffing around to try to make sense of the world around him. It's all right, honey. Yeah. There you go, bud. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, man. I'd love for you to, but I, I kind of can't let you. They have slightly keeled scales. They're little ridges on the scales that also help them grab onto things. So even though they do an awful lot of hunting for small mammals to eat, they're able to do it by being able to climb extremely well. They will at some point also go up into nests, bird nests, and eat things like starling nests and the like. And they're very good at that. So this is a very muscular animal is the best way to put it. And as you can see with its tongue, if you want to see too, there he is, wanting to make sense of this camera. I think he's more photogenic than I am. That's okay. Why, a snake like this can make quite a good living. All right. A female will lay about 20 eggs in June. They'll hatch two months later. The babies are 12 inches long. And in about three or four years, they'll be over three feet long and now they're grown up. You little people, you gotta you have to wait till you're 18. And you gotta get a job, get your own house. They got three years and something's gotta happen. So that is what the story is with a black rat snake. They love fields and edges of fields. They like to be able to climb things. And of course, because as I told you, they need to be black in order to keep warm this far north where winter's very cold. They like to be in open areas. They love to get up in trees where the sun will hit them and they can, and they can really warm up. Now, before I move on to the next black snake, does anybody have a question? Ah, I see a hand up over there. How old is this one? To a point, I can tell you, all right, when they, they get up to about four feet, they're probably five or six years old. This one's the size of it. It's probably seven or eight. And they can live to be about 20. Yes. How long is he? You know, I didn't really stretch him out, but I can show you this. If you put your arms, if you stretch your arms out, that gives you your actual height. Okay, I'm five feet, 10 and a half inches. I know we're not there on that, but I will bet you that this thing is about five feet. Yes, ma'am. They said they like to climb uh, trees to get to the top. So if we're like walking under a tree, can we fear like a snake falling on our head? No, I absolutely wouldn't. Because, they're, they're, because the stakes are very high in something like that. So um, if they were to fall, they could die. So there's a lot, there's strong selection for them being very, very good at climbing. Yes, sir. What happens if the snakes get cold? If they get cold, they just, they sort of ball up and they sit there and they wait until it gets warm again. If winter comes and they're not in a place where they won't freeze, then they would die. So a good question to ask is what tells them to hibernate so that they don't die? And for most of that, it's day length. As the days get shorter, that tells them that it's fixing to get cold, and then they'll go into, into cracks and rocks and such, stumps, bases of, of uh, rodent burrows and the like, and they'll spend the four or five months until it, until it warms up again. Uh, yes? Where's their shelter? Their shelter is a good question. Because it's just like us, right? Our shelter is home. 
their shelter is some type of cavity, like an old woodpecker hole or a rotting out hole in a tree. Sometimes there'll be cracks and rocks and things and they'll get into that. What they like most of all is to be very snug because then they're safe and nothing can pull them out and hurt them. Now, I wanna add one thing. These things are great predators. They can tackle all kinds of, of things. Red-tailed hawks are their predator. However, a red-tailed hawk could easily die catching one of these. So here's the trick. Red-tailed hawks don't normally go after these snakes in the summertime when a snake like this can fight back because it's warm and it's in its fighting trim. Instead, what they do is they catch them in April when they're all stretched out, still cold, trying to warm up, and they can't fight back. And that's how they get a big meal like this. Otherwise, they wouldn't stand a chance. Any other questions? You. Uh, uh, I want to say it's getting something warm and they're cold. They, they find something warm, like a, a warm rock. They lay out in the open where the sun will hit them or in an area where the air is warm. But here's something else they do. If this snake really wanted to heat up, he would curl himself in a circle just like that so that his body looks like a flat black disc, like a Frisbee. And that would give a lot of area for the sun to hit. Yes. Like for the booklets, are they money? Yeah. That's OK. I'll, I'll uh, hang you upside down and shake the money out of you. And then when I get that, you're going to have a book. Okay, you. How come their tongues are black? I don't know. And how come? Because ours are pink out there. I don't know. See, I don't know everything. Sometimes I make up the answers, but this one I don't know. I'll take one more question, then we're going to move on to another snake. One more. Looks like you got a question. Why does, uh, if it's called a black snake, why is there camouflage right there? Why is what? Why is there camouflage? <laughs> oh, I understand what you're saying is a black rat snake, but for reasons that we're really not sure, we know that they need to be black on top because that's where the sun hits them. They don't lay on their back to get warm. They lay on their stomach. So there's not so much selection on their belly to be a different color. So you catch some of them and they're black all the way down too. You see others and they're just kind of mishmashy like this, okay? So this is our black rat snake. Thing is, I don't wanna, I wanna give equal time to our other black snake, which is a snake that many people don't know about here in Pennsylvania. Have any of you heard of this sort of snake before, or ever seen one? You have, honey? I haven't seen, but I've heard. But you know of it, okay. Now, if you'll notice, <clears throat> I'm making two knots on this, and the reason is because rat snakes are very strong animals. And they poke and they prod, and they're escape artists, and they can get in and out of just about anything. Okay? So he's not going anywhere for a while. So. One thing we can summarize about this is that because they are constrictors, that there's all sorts of adaptations to being that way if that's what you're going to do. That would be different than, say, a rattlesnake that strikes its prey and then waits for the thing to die so it doesn't get hurt and then goes and eats it. But now we have yet another snake that is called, that people would think is a black snake. Now remember some of the things that we said about black rat snakes, where they live and how they live. And please also notice or remember what you saw when I was holding the black rat snake. What, how would you describe that black rat snake to me in terms of how its uh, disposition was? Would you say that it was mean? I wouldn't. I'd say it was pretty gentle. All right. This one is not. This one. 
This one is, hold on a minute. Do we have paper towel? Oh wait, where's Amy? Paper towel, please. Just in case. All right. This one here is a black racer. These are one of my, I love rat snakes. But up here, I really, really like black racers. They get a lot bigger than this, people. They'll get up to six feet. They get very heavy bodied. They, they are not poisonous. They're not poisonous. But they don't constrict either. Take a look, though. Look at how shiny and black it is. Get a good shot of the head if you'd like. Hmm? You got it? Good. Huh? That's all right. Oh, sorry about that, pal. All right. All right. Okay. Can you see it? Take a look above its eyes. Doesn't it look like it has uh, eyebrows? Like a shield's over its eyes? Okay. Well, here's, take a look at the difference in this snake if you look at, uh, if you look at its eyes. Good. What's very different about these snakes is that unlike the rat snake, the racer uses sight far and above every other sense it has. And the sun stays out of its eyes with the scale shields and the snake periscopes, and it just moves through the grass looking for stuff. It's not poisonous, it doesn't constrict. What it does instead is it grabs its food and it just wrestles with it until it's able to eat it. Its very, very favorite food is other snakes. And they're very, very good at eating other snakes. They're black as well because they have a high metabolism. They need to be hotter on average than does this snake. Well, what more can you do other than be black to get up heat? Well, for the racer, it just means that they have to live in very, very open, grassy areas where there's lots of sun, lots of warmth, so that they can be as hot as they need to be to do the kinds of things that they need to do. They move very quickly. It's very difficult to catch a racer. It's not easy at all. Most of the time you just see their tail just slip away, okay? They too can live a pretty long life. As I say, they get very big here. And in a grassland, apart from a hawk, they may be the top predator out there, all right? Sometime around mid-June, they'll, they'll lay 14 to 18 eggs, and two months later, their eggs will hatch. But unlike the rat snake, they gotta be careful because a large racer will eat a baby racer. So baby racers usually live along edges to stay away from big racers until they're big enough to try to make a living in an open field. All right, you had your hand up. Oh, how old is that? How old? Five? You had your hand up. Did you, have, you forgot it? Okay, you? Why um, do big racers eat the little racers? Because, honey, they, I do not think that they know what they're eating. They just see it's another snake and they eat it. How long are the baby racers? Eight, nine inches. And they're heavily banded in pattern. They're not at all black. The same thing with rat snakes. Rat snake babies don't look like adult black rats. So like if a mom has a baby, would the like mom eat the baby? Well, she would know because she would lay her eggs, cover them up, do the best job she can, then she'd leave. That's the end of that. Huh? And leave them. Leave them, and then the eggs will hatch. But how would he know? If, so if he was saw them, he wouldn't know if they basically were over and probably eat them. Right. They would not know that those are their own babies. Okay. If if it doesn't know how that 
Say the snake? Oh yeah, they know what they're reading. What? They were both using that bucket when they try um make a racer and the black snake try to eat each other. No. Uh rat snakes do not eat other snakes. And racers of this size know that they can't eat a uh, black uh, black rat snake, so they wouldn't try. It would be dangerous. Yeah, buddy. This one is a boy. What, what was the, the other one was also a boy. Any other questions? Hold on. Anybody? You. I'm sorry? If it fought a cobra. I can't hear you. If it fought a cobra. If it what? Fought a cobra. Yeah. No, it would not. Actually, cobras are snake eaters, and they're poisonous, so it would, it would have a problem. Anywhere you go in the world, anywhere that has snakes, there is always going to be some snake species that lives like a racer, always, everywhere. It's a niche that's filled by one or more snakes in a different area. In our country, we have coach whips down south, which get up to eight feet long, and they'll eat racers. And where they co-occur with racers, racers are small. They've got to stay away from them. But once you come up here, it's too cold for a coach whip, and you have just racers. And racers become very big and very dangerous to other snakes, including small racers. And that's part of the food web, which is something that you would learn in biology. OK? Yes? Is big racers, is little racers faster than big racers? I don't know. I don't know that. that. Well, young friends, I'm very glad that you could make it here today. It was really my pleasure to be able to share with you these things. So always remember, just saying it's a black snake, there's more to it than that. It's either a racer or it's a rat snake, and now you know it discerns them, and that's part of your natural legacy here in Pennsylvania. So thank you very much.